boys and girls, I'm the reading teacher, and today you are in luck because I'm going to read to you one of my favorite books ever. And I know I probably say that a lot, but this one is really one of my favorite books. In fact, I read it to the students in my classroom every single year. I think you'll really enjoy it. Now, we've talked a lot about fiction versus nonfiction, haven't we? We know that in nonfiction books, the author writes for a reason. The author's reason is to teach us something that we might not know or give us new information. Oftentimes, in nonfiction books, we'll see photographs of real things with captions, the sentence underneath that tells us what the photograph is. That's a little different than a fiction story. A fiction story, the author writes for a reason, but the reason that he writes a fiction story is to entertain us, to make us laugh, or to tell us a good story, or to make us feel something. Now, fiction stories most often have illustrations in them, drawings, pictures that the illustrator has drawn versus a photograph in a nonfiction story. Something else that a fiction story has that a nonfiction story doesn't is a problem. There's always a problem that we want to read about. That gets the reader to keep reading until he finds the solution. So fiction stories have a problem and it most of the time gets solved at the end with a solution. So today, during the story that I'm reading to you, we're going to be thinking about the problem and the solution. So what kind of story is this then, if I said it has a problem and a solution? That's right, a fiction story. We can also tell by looking at the front cover. <clears throat> you see donkeys and pigs talking outside their homes. I don't think that that could really happen. So this story is a fiction story. All right, it's called Sylvester and the Magic Pebble. And it's by William Stieg. I want you to pay special attention to the words that William Stieg writes. He is a wonderful author and uses great vocabulary. And I want you to hear how that really enhances and enriches his story. Something you might want to try when you're writing a story. Put in some of those bigger words. He also is a master at describing and making the reader feel things. See how you are feeling during this story. I think you're going to love it. It's one of my favorites. Let's get to it. Sylvester and the Magic Pebble by William Stieg. Sylvester Duncan lived with his mother and father at Acorn Road in Oatsdale. One of his hobbies was collecting pebbles of unusual shape and color. And there he is collecting his pebbles. I bet you could make a connection. I bet there's something that you like to collect. On a rainy Saturday during vacation, he found a quite extraordinary one. It was flaming red, shiny and perfectly round like a marble. As he was studying this remarkable pebble, he began to shiver, probably from excitement, and the rain felt cold on his back. I wish it would stop raining, he said. To his great surprise, the rain stopped. It didn't stop gradually as rains usually do. It ceased. The drops vanished on the way down. The clouds disappeared. Everything was dry and the sun was shining as if rain had never existed. Huh, that's strange. I've never heard of that before, have you? Let's go back and make sure we really understand. So he finds this beautiful pebble and he wishes upon the pebble and says, I wish it would stop raining and the rain ceased. Do you think you know what ceased means? The rain ceased. It stopped. In all his young life, Sylvester had never had a wish gratified so quickly. It struck him that magic must be at work, and he guessed that the magic must be in the remarkable-looking red pebble, where indeed it was. To make a test, he put the pebble on the ground and said, I wish it would rain again. Nothing happened. But when he said the same thing, holding the pebble in his hoof, the sky turned black, there was lightning and a clap of thunder, and the rain came shooting down. What a lucky day this is, thought Sylvester. From now on, I can have anything my I want. My father and mother can have anything they want. 
my relatives, my friends, and anybody at all can have everything anybody wants. He wished the sunshine back in the sky, and he wished a wart on his left hind fetlock would disappear, and it did, and he started home, eager to amaze his father and mother with his magic pebble. He could hardly wait to see their faces. Maybe they wouldn't even believe him at first. All right, so it is a magic pebble, isn't it? But it only works a certain way. Do you remember what did he do to make the magic work? There is something that he has to do to make it work. Right, he has to hold it in his hand or in his hoof, say the wish, and then it comes true. As he was crossing Strawberry Hill, thinking of some of the many, many things he could wish for, he was startled to see a mean, hungry lion looking right at him from behind some tall grass. He was frightened. If he hadn't been so frightened, he could have made the lion disappear, or he could have wished himself safe at home with his mother and father. He could have wished the lion would turn into a butterfly or a daisy or a gnat. He could have wished many things, but he panicked and couldn't think carefully. I wish I were a rock, he said, and he became a rock. The lion came bounding over, sniffed the rock a hundred times, walked around and around it, and away it went, confused, perplexed, puzzled, and bewildered. I saw that little donkey as clear as day. Maybe I'm going crazy, he muttered. Is he going crazy, or is Sylvester really there? That's Sylvester. He turned himself into a rock. And there was Sylvester, a rock on Strawberry Hill, with the magic pebble lying right beside him on the ground, and he was unable to pick it up. Oh, how I wish I were myself again, he thought, but nothing happened. He had to be touching the pebble to make the magic work, but there was nothing he could do about it. His thoughts began to race like mad. He was scared and worried. Being helpless, he felt hopeless. He imagined all the possibilities and eventually he realized that his only chance of becoming himself again was for someone to find the red pebble and to wish that the rock next to it would be a donkey. Someone would surely find the red pebble. It was so bright and shiny, but what on earth would make them wish that a rock were a donkey? The chance was one in a billion at best. Sylvester fell asleep. What else could he do? Night came with many stars. All right, I think we have found the problem of this book, haven't we? Sylvester is now a pebble. And do you see how the way that William Stieg is writing, it's really making you feel something for this little donkey, Sylvester, isn't it? We feel sad for him. We feel worried for him. Let's see what happens. Meanwhile, back at home, Mr. and Mrs. Duncan paced the floor, frantic with worry. Sylvester had never come home later than dinner time. Where could he be? They stayed up all night wondering what had happened, expecting that Sylvester would surely turn up by morning, but he didn't, of course. Mrs. Duncan cried a lot, and Mr. Duncan did his best to soothe her. Both longed to have their dear son with them. I will never scold Sylvester again as long as I live, said Mrs. Duncan, no matter what he does. At dawn, they went about inquiring of all the neighbors. And look, this is the very front cover. They're inquiring the neighbors. What do you think inquiring means? You're right, they're asking questions. Have you seen my son Sylvester? Have you seen my son Sylvester? They talked to all the children, the puppies, the kittens, the colts, the piglets. No one had seen Sylvester since the day before yesterday. They went to the police. The police could not find their child. And boys and girls, look at the faces of Mr. and Mrs. Duncan. 
All the dogs in Oatsdale went searching for him. They sniffed behind every rock and tree and blade of grass into every nook and gully of the neighborhood and beyond, but found not a scent of him. They sniffed the rock on Strawberry Hill, but it smelled like a rock. It didn't smell like Sylvester. After a month of searching the same places over and over again, and inquiring of the same animals over and over again, Mr. and Mrs. Duncan no longer knew what to do. They concluded that something dreadful must have happened and that they would probably never see their son again, though all the time he was less than a mile away. They tried their best to be happy, to go about their usual ways, but their usual ways included Sylvester, and they were always reminded of him. They were miserable. Life had no meaning for them anymore. Night followed day, and day followed night over and over again. Sylvester on the hill woke up less and less often. When he was awake, he was only hopeless and unhappy. He felt he would be a rock forever, and he tried to get used to it. He went into an endless sleep. The days grew colder. Fall came with the leaves changing color. Then the leaves fell, and the grass bent to the ground. So now it's no longer summer, it's fall. Time is passing, isn't it? Then it was winter. The winds blew this way and that. It snowed. Mostly the animals stayed indoors, living on the food they had stored up. One day a wolf sat on the rock that was Sylvester and howled and howled because he was hungry. And you can't even see the rock, the pebble, because it's covered up by the snow, can you? Then the snows melted. The earth warmed up in the spring sun and things budded. Leaves were on the ground again. Flowers showed their young faces. One day, Mr. Duncan insisted that his wife go with him on a picnic. Let's cheer up, he said. Let us try to live again and be happy, even though Sylvester, our angel, is no longer with us. They went to Strawberry Hill. Mrs. Duncan sat down on the rock. The warmth of his own mother sitting on him woke Sylvester up from his deep winter sleep. How he wanted to shout, Mother! Father, it's me! Sylvester, I'm right here! But he couldn't talk. He had no voice. He was stone dumb. Oh, doesn't that page just make you feel something? Here he is, and that's his mom and dad who've been looking for him for so long, and all he wants is to hug them and tell them, it's me. But he can't. Unless, see, there's this pebble. How many of you are predicting what may happen? Mr. Duncan walked aimlessly about while Mrs. Duncan set out the picnic food on the rock. Alfalfa sandwiches, pickled oats, sassafras salad, Timothy compote. Suddenly, Mr. Duncan saw the red pebble. What a fantastic pebble! he exclaimed. Sylvester would have loved it for his collection. He put the pebble on the rock. They sat down to eat. Sylvester was now as wide awake as a donkey that was a rock could possibly be. Mrs. Duncan felt some mysterious excitement. You know, father, she said suddenly, I have the strangest feeling that our dear Sylvester is alive and not far away. I am, I am, Sylvester wanted to shout, but he couldn't. If only he had realized that the pebble resting on his back was the magic pebble. Oh, how I wish we, he were here with us on this lovely May day, said Mrs. Duncan. Mr. Duncan looked sadly at the ground. Don't you wish it too, father, she said. He looked at her as if to say, how can you ask such a question? Mr. and Mrs. Duncan looked at each other with great sorrow. I wish I were myself again. I wish I were my real self again, thought Sylvester. And in less than a moment, he was. 
You can imagine the scene that followed. The embraces, the kisses, the questions, the answers, the loving looks, and the fond exclamations. I love that page. When they had eventually calmed down a bit and had gotten home, Mr. Duncan put the magic pebble in an iron safe. Someday they might want to use it, but really, for now, what more could they wish for? They all had all they wanted. The end. The reason I love that story so much is Really, you feel so many great emotions in that story. You feel happy for Sylvester at the end. You feel um, excited for him in the beginning when he finds his magic pebble. You feel sad and devastated for his mom and dad. But in the end, the solution, how the problem is solved, saves the day, right? And we feel happy all over again. So the problem was he turned into a rock. And what was the solution? That's right, because of that magic pebble, he turned back into his old self again. So fiction stories always have a problem and the problem gets solved at the end of the story and that's called the solution. He, William Stieg that is, has written a lot of great stories and I hope that you get to check those out at the library. I think you'll really, really like the way that he writes. Boys and girls, I'm so glad I got to share with you my favorite book. And will you please subscribe to this channel if you haven't already? And tell your friends if you think that this is a good place to go to listen to stories. I hope you have a great day. I'll see you later.